Hello everyone, good morning and very good morning and welcome all here. Uh, I believe like when I am talking, most of you might be having an expectation that I will be talking about text path and selectors. How many of you have that first in mind? Are you looking for just for that? So, okay, so absolutely, uh, like highly I will be talking about text path and selectors. Let's talk some other problems today. So, uh, there are like lots of problems in, uh, in our QA space. And uh, along with the problems, I will try to give the solutions as well. And uh, they will be the solutions and the problems. I will be talking most of the problems will be like your day-to-day -day problems. And the solution, whatever I will be uh, talking about here, you will be right away able to use it. And all will be like all the products and uh, solutions will be free, absolutely free and community product. So the very first problem. Uh, like if I ask you guys, uh, like test scenarios or test cases of any particular functionality or feature. Let's say for an example, uh, login functionality. Generally, we, whenever we talk in conferences or in any webinar, we talk about like login functionality. So I will also talk about login functionality. Uh, so if we ask the like, what are the test cases for login functionality? I believe like most of us will not talk exactly same scenarios. Someone here might be fresher, someone might be like 10 to 5 years experience. So the hands, if I ask you guys to raise the hand and tell me the login functionality scenario, someone will like this, like this, someone will like this. Whoever will be knowing very good scenarios, he will be like, okay, this. So it is like very much unexpected to know that, uh, uh, not know, it is very much unexpected that this person will do the 100% of uh, my feature testing, this person will do like 70 or 80 percent or maybe like more than 100 percent. So whenever we get any feature or any functionality to test, it becomes really difficult to uh, make sure for a person, uh, for a manager to make sure that if he is giving this feature to test to a professor or to a like lead, will they be able to do the same level of uh, functionality testing. So how can we make sure that if a professor is doing the testing, he will be able to cover all the scenario? If a lead is doing, he will be able to cover this, all the scenario. Even if a, a senior expert is doing, he will be doing the same level of test. So I want to like, we want to make sure that whatever feature we are testing and delivering into the production, that goes well and well tested. At least basics should not break, sanity should not break. Right. Okay, so this was like one of the challenges that uh, generally whenever we have to deliver any product or feature, uh, sorry, any feature to the production or any, uh, in any environment, we face a lot of challenges uh, for like expertise, like who is better expert. The second problem is like, I am the same guy for whom we have given the login functionality to test today. After five days, same functionality has been given it to me to test. Will I be able to test the same scenarios? Will I be able to recall all the same scenarios which I have done five days ago? Or if I, any one of you, like if I give it to you, like login functionality test today, and after seven days if I give it to you, will you able to be covering all those scenarios which you have done it today? It is very much difficult. Like login is like very simple one, but in general, like if we talk about like more scenarios, more features, it becomes really difficult to uh, cover all the same scenarios like today and after 10 days. It depends totally on our mood. Like if we had uh, some family issues or some fight at home and then coming to office, we might be in different mood to test the functionality. We might done some abrupt kind of testing. If we are in a very good mood, we might be able to cover a really good scenarios. So it totally depends. So to solve all these kind of problems, to make sure that whatever feature we are deli delivering into the production, we make sure that everything is covered, no matter how much experience guy has done the testing, no matter what is the situation or what is the mind of our testers today, we want to make sure that all the scenarios are covered, at least standard scenarios of any functionality. To make sure that we have the solution now, this test case up. So what it is, uh, this is a very simple one page application, which is a kind of like encyclopedia of test cases or maybe you can call it repository of test cases and test scenarios where the test cases and test scenarios are written by all the community people people from different different companies 
and they have been rated, uploaded, reviewed, and everything. So, if I'm sure that most of you must have heard about Stack Overflow. So, when you copy, when you get an answer on the Stack Overflow, how do you make sure that this answer is correct and this is good? We should uh, utilize this in our uh, in our uh, problem solving. You check for the uploads, right? Both and uploads. And uh, when initially it was like that Stack Overflow was developed. There was no data, right? There was not all the answers, not uh, like all the problems were there. Over the time that has been evolved. So similarly, this is the application. Generally, community people call it like Stack Overflow for testers. So if I show you guys how this will work, just go to stackersup.com, there you will get all the details. And this is the uh, URL, testcasehub.net. And now suppose we need a test cases for a particular functionality. So let's say we need a uh, for data base. So we'll search it here. I hope this is visible. So here you will see that uh, the test case, this is the test case. It is written by Milan Patil, reviewed by this person, Sanjay Kumar. And all those like this is positive, negative, priority, and everything is there. So these kind of test cases, you, you will get it from here. And over the time, they will be like uh, upwards also, you can see that they, that has been uploaded. And uh, over the time, they are going to upload or uh, whatever. So all those data will be keep appearing here. Like let's say we want the test cases for login. So generally, you see that if we ask you the uh, login scenarios, most of the time, we used to say that um, correct user ID password, wrong user ID password, null values, uh, blank values, like that. I will tell you uh, one scenario which has been asked to uh, me in an interview. Uh, like he was expecting more and more and more. Tell me more, tell me more. Then I was like done. And I was not able to think of much. If I, I will ask any one of you stand up and tell me the scenarios, you will be able to tell, but at one stage you will stuck. Abhi kya batao so I don't know much, right? So there was one scenario. Tell me like if you have how many of you have covered that scenario, login scenario. We will log in successfully. Then we we'll log out, then press on the back button of the browser, it should not show me as login. How many of you have covered this scenario or heard about this scenario when you have done the login? So you see that like 30-40% people have done this, but not everyone has done this or might have thought about this scenario. So there are like lots of scenarios could be there that which we might not be able, everyone might not be able to think and absolutely that's absolutely right. Like I'm not a good tester, I'm not a very uh, from a very much testing background, I have done some of the testing, but not really good tester. So I don't know that much of scenarios. But I want to do the that kind of testing which a person doing in Google or which a person doing in a startup or in ThoughtWorks or in a software, browser tech or anywhere a person doing the testing. I want to cover those scenarios which they are doing. So how I will get that scenarios? How I will get that expertise from that company? Because I cannot hire a person. I cannot afford a person who is who can work in Google or who can work in like uh, these big big companies. So this is the platform where people will be co uh, coming and contributing different uh, from different different companies from different different experiences. Like uh, so, so this, here you will get all those test cases basically, all the test scenarios. And for some uh, for some features you might not be able to get more uh, test cases here. So they, there you can add as well. Like if you feel that, okay, some of the scenarios, some of the test cases, I know better. So you can just log in here or sign up and then you can write the test cases here. So any test case you, which you feel that this test case, this scenario is missing for this particular functionality, that you can add, add here. And here like now we have features, these all available scenarios. So you can check that which all scenarios are available, which all test cases are available for which particular scenario. And uh, you can see that for any particular feature. So if you are an expert in any particular uh, feature or uh, scenario, then that you can add it here. And submit basically. So that will be reviewed going through the review process. Someone from the community will review the test case. You will see that uh, the test case has been reviewed by whom and that will start appearing here. So this is going to basically evolve over the time. And here you can see the like who are the uh, contributors, who are the reviewers everything you can uh, see, you can suggest here, and this is the uh, recently launched product. Any question? Yes, please. Is that on the scenario level or on a more detailed level? And then the second follow-up question is obviously we need to check for data, the PR, things like that. So 
are you putting that, those kind of things in this? Yes, so this is like uh, just two month old application. This is evolving. So all these features has been added recently. Like uh, you see that upwards, and now we have added the profile option and all the available scenarios, configurable leader, severe leader, board. So this has been added from the like uh, a community feedback perspective. So I will like uh, what you have just suggested that is that those options are available or not. Like more filters basically are those that if you want uh, for a particular, let's say you want for mobile application test cases or you want uh, for API test cases. So those filters will be appearing soon here. So yes. Great idea. Yeah. Thanks. So one question actually. Uh, let's say we are giving you know, uh, API No, no. So that is not possible. Of course, like uh, for the users, it is not possible. Not for the reviewers. Uh, nobody can delete the test cases. It can be only uh, from the admin side. Both those who will be the reviewers, uh, they can only just unpublish or they can uh, suggest some changes. So uh, delete is not there. Yes. Can someone from the team include your name? Yes. Right? Need, so you know, a lot of time maps, right? Because I don't know. I might not be, uh, you know, good tester, and I just want to do something. Yeah, yeah, we are on the same. Yeah, adding the test cases. So how, how I you know, uh, filtering those out? Uh, yes. What, what is it? Yeah. So as of now, this is like uh, not anything that I'm not doing anything here. So reviewing or writing the test cases, this all of you are doing. So if you will be looking at here, so most of the people you will find that they are the uh, community people, those who have written the test cases, those who have reviewed the test cases. And now we have added the feature, so I'm just adding the feature and making the product more stable and evolving it to help you guys. So here, if you will go in any of these functionality, you will see that someone from the community has written these test cases, other person has reviewed the test cases. And once you will add the 100 test cases, you will become, your profile will automatically upgrade it to the reviewer. So you will also be able to review others' test cases. So if, like, let's say uh, you have done the review, okay, and this person has written the test case, and you have reviewed, and you both of you are friends, so he has written and you have approved, and that kind of cycle is going on. So another reviewer, like he is the reviewer, so he can also come and check, and then he can unpublish those test cases. And yes, we are adding more from strategies like duplication will be filtered out, anything wrong is going that will not be uh, published, and your LinkedIn profile will be there, so you will be afraid to approve any kind of wrong things over there. So like let's say this email uh, test cases are there, and right now there will be like some of the uh, test cases you will be seeing as author self, because they were the test cases which has been in at their like beginning they, they were written, so uh, you, will, you might not find all the reviewers name, but we are adding them, so like this one here. So this is Milan Patel has written this test case. This was reviewed by SK Amir and their LinkedIn profile you can see okay who are these person who has written this test case and who is the person who has uh, reviewed this test case. So this is the person who has reviewed the test case. So you can check the authenticity of the person that okay this person has this these many years of experience he is working in this company. So if this person has written this test case then I can trust that okay this is a good test case and this has been reviewed by this person so this is a good test case. So like that, and we are adding more and more feature trying to uh, like uh, filter it out, adding best, so that like you can trust that okay, this person, uh, this test case has been written by this person with this much experience, so you will be able to trust it because trust is really required. Yes, please. So I mean, can I place a requirement? Okay, I need a test case like this, or only to download the test case which already available? No. So uh, whatever is available that you can copy or download, if you feel that okay, these test cases are not there, then you can just put uh, like there in the like bottom, you can just uh, put it as a, like you can submit like this particular functionality and then you can just start with one test cases and more people will come and then add that. And uh, you, there is a suggestions as well, so you can raise a ticket that we need uh, test cases for these functionality, so you can add the ticket and someone from the community will come and add those test cases, whoever will be known. So this is basically for manual testing, right? Uh, why for manual? Does auto user tester is not required or developer doesn't require? Like I am a developer, I have developed the login functionality. Means this tool will be there only to have written manual test and then we can pick and Oh yes, 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 yes. That is not right. Yes, yes, yes. 
So this is basically going to help like whether he is a test manager or tester or developer. So everyone, because I am a developer, I don't know that many good test cases what you guys must be knowing. So whenever I am developing any feature or like let's say payment one was there, I was not aware because I have never done the payment functionality testing. So uh, so that way like I can get the good test cases for the payment written by somebody. Sanjay, I think there will be based on some of the test cases. What are the steps? Sorry? I don't see the extent of a test case. Okay, so that much like general level is not like okay. That much uh, steps are not written. At high level, it is written so that like you can get it started. And of course, like in uh, that at that level, maybe like in future we will add. But as of now, test level is still. Yes. Okay. So that will actually be dependent on the product and the application which is using. So which is difficult to generalize. Yes, yes. So it is a kind of like filters. So like we have added some of the filters at initially, but yes, over the time more filters will be there. So that you that way you would be able to like uh, filter it out. Like let's say uh, I mean it's in a beta stage actually. If I want to show, I can show you that it will be having the filters like okay, these many test cases are there for credit card, but what test cases will be for mobile? So that option you will be having. What test cases will be on tablet? Or, uh, so those kind of platform. What are the test tags, cases? Tags will help. So if you say this particular um, can belong to a different kind of uh, yes. industry or the tagging has forms. been done in the background. Yes. Okay. Yes. 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 Once you will become the reviewer, like once uh, because. Everybody wants to do that. I mean, nobody will be happy with the test cases which are already written or which has been written by someone else. So that you would be able to do that once you have submitted. Like once you have done the enough contribution and you are, you will become automatically a reviewer of that. And because it is very early stage, so you can also recommend or you can just let me know or in the suggestion that this particular functionality has duplicate test cases or this is not the right test cases which has been reviewed by these people. So please update them. Yes, that is possible. Yes, yes. In your profile, you would be able to see also. There are like a lot of many features, so you can just, uh, I would recommend that watch on the, uh, like read more about it here. And uh, I have already created tutorials how to use, how to, like everything is there on this page. So on the address of website, you can see everything is there. So please have a look, explore it. You will uh, get to know a lot more things. Like not just download if any particular test case you want to copy, like one, two, three test cases you found useful, so you can copy only those two. So all those things are there. Okay. Yes. Sir. 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 So, in the work, they will they have the option to request for the changes. Like, if you have submitted some test case which is not which requires some spelling fix or maybe like something some update is required, they will review and you can then uh, update that test case. So, that is there and it will appear in your profile. You can see the notification. Um, see, when, uh, let's suppose if I write the test cases uh, for my application. Okay, uh, what reviewer will check? Reviewer will check only the basic syntax of it or maybe what else they will check and give the feedback okay, because so they don't know about the, our application. It is, it is, it is not like uh, uh, particular for an application of your application. It is a gen generic platform. Right. Okay. So if I have any specific product or some specific thing, it might not be that helpful at this stage but maybe like over the time we will be having those options that where you can like, if you want to store some of the test cases for your particular thing uh, under your profile that you can write it and just keep it there. So actually you can do that because under profile you can write your test cases and just, uh, they will be like just unpublished and whenever you want you can, because this situation also we have heard from some of the people from the community that I am working today in this company, I have done this much testing, I have these many test cases we have to like that and then, so they can submit, uh, you can submit your keep and test all the test cases there Whenever you will be like new place, you will not have to rethink all those test cases. Or maybe in the same place, you after like six months down the time, or you become senior people or someone, then you don't want to rethink those test cases, whatever you have thought today. 
So because we don't do the testing each and every day, every time whenever we get the feature that time we start thinking of what could be the scenario for this one. So yeah, that will be there. Uh, so you can just, okay, uh, can we take this question like maybe otherwise like we will respect on this. Uh, we can take all the questions like after. Uh, how you can contribute and support? So you can just uh, like create an account and you can start uh, contributing in that. And whichever test case you found helpful, you can upload which you feel that they are not good test cases, you can down, uh, download as well. And please uh, do contribute support on that so that like, it will be helpful for you and your team. And maybe like tomorrow, if you will be at new case, you will, it will be helpful. Next set of problem is, how do you get this test to reproduce the bugs? Like if you, you are doing a testing and uh, at particular stage you got a bug and now you have to uh, file a bug in the Bugasura or any test management tool like uh, Jira and all. So if you have to file the bug or if you have to tell to your uh, developer that this is the issue you have got and he has to fix it. So how do you get the steps for that bug? Anyone? Record these steps. Come on, uh, we used to like redo the testing or rethink in the mind that okay, uh, like these are these steps, and then we start writing them. In Jira, like when you uh, file a bug in Jira, what do you do? Like you write it manually, right? Uh, open this, click here, right click here, and then you will this you will land on this page, and then you will uh, get this bug. And how do you get a screenshot to file the bug? Because we generally, is there anyone who file a bug without a screenshot? We testers feel that a screenshot is the best proof to uh, like authenticate, authenticate, say that okay, this this is the test case and uh, oh sorry, this is the bug and in this screenshot we always try to show that see this has broken in my machine. So we always need this screenshot and how do you take this screenshot? You like do like something like this. You take this screenshot and then you highlight the field. Do you do like this? Yes. We all do that. And then you save that test case or whatever. How do you prove your testing if issue comes in production? Like, suppose you have done a testing for a particular functionality and issue comes in production. So generally, how do you uh, prove that you have done this test? With the screenshots. Whatever. With the screenshots. Yes, defects, but suppose that issue was not there in the test environment, it comes in production. It happened many times and what we start doing in that situation? We start blaming each other, right? <laughs> Tom and Jerry fight. That's happened and I'm sure like in every testing, I mean in every company, every place it happens. I start blaming developer, developer start blaming, blaming tester, no it is his base, his base, test manager, to name party as after production. So that happened a lot, right? And we don't have generally most of most because nobody of none of us right uh, like to do the documentation. <coughs> nobody like to take the screenshot of each and every step. step. Nobody likes to uh, write these steps that whatever they have followed to do the testing. So in this kind of situation, how can we solve all these problems without doing anything? Like because uh, we do. Uh, we just wanted to do whatever we are doing, whatever you are doing. You don't want to add one more extra step. Because Sanjay has came and he has given talk like me, whatever he has taught, I will take that knowledge and I will do that. No, you will not do that. Nobody will do that. Whatever Gyan I will be giving here, nobody is going to follow that, I'm sure. And even if I will be there, I won't do that. So how can we get the solution for all these problems? And there are like more, a number of problems if we keep talking. So how can we solve all these problems without doing anything? So, uh, like, I will take an example. Okay, so here you see that, suppose we have to do the, this is not, suppose we have to do the search functionality testing of Google. Okay, so if I search here, let's say I am searching for Slack, so hit enter. I scroll down, click here, then I am on this page, let's say I click right click on the products, then I click on practice page, 
then uh, let's say I click here first enter name and here you see that this field is not editable any input box cannot be non editable on the web page right that's a bug it should always be editable we should be able to edit now here is a bug so we have to file a bug this one Anyone of you remember all these steps which I have followed because this bug will be reproduced only if we follow the same steps what I just performed. Is anyone able to recall all the steps which I have followed where I right click, where I click, where I scroll? No one, right? And we have to file a bug in Jira. But now we don't want to repeat those steps, we don't want to type as well, we don't want to take this screenshot. So here you see that this is the test case studio which I have uh, knowingly just turned on before starting this testing. So here you see, I hope this is visible, right? Yeah. You can read it. Now you see that here, open website, the very first step is open this google.com, enter selector sub into search, then I press enter, then we scroll down, then we click on that link, selector of that one, then right click on products, click on practice page, click on first enter name. All my steps are ready. What I have to just do, Click on this copy button and paste it to my developer. In, that, uh, in chat or in like test management tool, bug management tool, that these are the steps to reproduce this bug and fix this. And where is the screenshot which we were talking? You see that here is the screenshot and the field is highlighted. That here is the bug. And the best thing about it is the name of the uh, this is screenshot is click on first enter name and that is the seventh step. So, like if you save this test case or copy this, uh, you can also copy this image as well. Like if we save this, so the best thing about it, the screenshot, it will be having the name of the test case. So, this is basically you get the screenshot test case. This is a screenshot test case. You see that every screenshot has here name, open website, the first one is. And likewise, like all of these steps has here name. You see that? While the screenshot which we generally take manually, that used to have this kind of name like a screenshot and that timestamp. If I will end up the talk here today and tomorrow if I will open my system and looking for this, these screenshots, what is this screenshot I have taken for, I will be not able to recall that what was the purpose of this screenshot. But here you have those screenshot and it will be having the name of that uh, particular step that okay this is screenshot is for click on first step if I just directly copy and paste it to my developer or in test management tool I will be able to like whoever will be looking at that bug easily able to understand okay this is screenshot is for clicking on this step and here we have the bug so this is how you can solve all these problems which we were talking about like we got these all these steps to reduce the bug we got this screenshot and Suppose this is not a bug here, suppose we were doing some testing, so now you see that if that, suppose this was not a bug and we were doing this testing, so we have downloaded this test case and this is screenshot and we expose the release into the production that, so, and suppose this issue comes in production, tomorrow it start breaking in production and your manager comes to you that this has been broken in production. You have the proof that you have done this testing and you have these screenshots. So yes, I have done this testing and here are the screenshots, here are the steps which I have followed to do the testing. And everything you can show them that look, here everything was working, now it is breaking in production. That could be something else, it was not my fault. What do you do in case of an intermittent bug? Uh, what do you do in case of? If you, if you encounter an intermittent bug, sometimes bugs are intermittent bugs. Yes. What do you do in such cases? How does uh, your test case to be your it is not something like uh, it will do it will record whatever you are recording whatever you are performing at that moment whatever has happened it will record that so then you decide like whether you want to save that so you will also get that so actually in those kind of situations where you get the intermittent bug and you are not able to reproduce in that situation this is very helpful because you will get to know you will it will capture those steps and now next time when the steps you will not be able to reduce the work, it will the recorded steps will help you. That if you follow exactly same these steps, like if because we don't remember a scroll, we don't remember if we have somewhere uh, right click on which particular because many times it could happen that 
that issue will reproduce if you click right click on this products sometimes but if you right click here then issue will not reproduce so or in those kind of situation it will be very helpful that you will be getting the exact steps so but how how secure is this data because when you capture all the information uh, the data will be there in the database right but how secure is that data yes, production so or data confidentiality yes i am so thankful that you asked it and this is the question which always being asked to me the very first question so this is absolutely safe and secure you see that uh, this runs actually uh, offline in your system and this has been featured in chrome store and all the uh, data and everything is in your local system so you see that it is featured here by the chrome store which means it follows all the standards of the uh, chrome extensions and the chrome policies google policies as well as if you see it here it runs offline so if you turn off the internet it it will even then also it will run so it doesn't save any of your data in the cloud we don't have any server so that is the uh, proof and yes in those company those who have security check and everything uh, where the extensions are blocked they generally used to run their uh, like this script to check if this extension is saving some data or doing something uh, fishy in the background then they unblock then they block the test uh, like that particular extension so it has been on unblock almost like every company many banking companies are using that's what i can uh, like assure and tell and you can see that it is a uh, one of the highest rated extension out there in chrome store or five star rated and more than 10000 people and almost like everywhere it is being used uh not for native apps but yeah for mobile where it used to work like if you are opening your uh, website in mobile uh mobile view so like this way yes it will be able to record and then there are like lots of other features in this you can uh, you see that it used to generate the x bar it used to generate css selector you can customize the ui and uh, so so many other things are there you can add a step you can delete a step and then uh, if you don't want any particular column like here it's showing x factor results of css selector you don't want them you can uncheck them you can also generate this script along with the x path and selectors so lot many features are there you can uh, explore them and this will be like very really helpful can we generate a proper test case for this uh, what do you mean by proper test case? see let's say for example what we have done is adopt testing okay yeah. maybe which is not there in the test case we have done it randomly and we found something and for that these steps are generated but can we convert it to a proper test case uh, no no it's not a, a record and play tool we are used to generate the script as of now so it doesn't generate the test case it doesn't generate the script which we are looking for like the other recorded tools is not a kind of a, those kind of recorded tool which used to record the test case and then convert into the script so it doesn't do that but yes there is an option here which you can use for uh, this particular requirement like you can click on this like whatever steps it, it has recorded you have recorded you click on this and then it will uh, execute your steps in test rigor and from there you can get the script for the test case so that is possible in this way but right there in the tool that is not possible so here you can like in test rigor you see that the test cases whatever we have recorded so far that is all these steps are being executed and this tool will generate this step but test case studio is the tool which used to convert the human accents into plain english sentences along with the screenshot and the uh, x path and css selector other stuff you are i mean directly it will come as an uh, the word document can i attach directly to the jira or yes, the yes, yes. yes. people uh, use for the same uh, same practice for that so yeah yeah please no recording as well i mean do we have plans to add the recording along with the screenshot uh, yes yes like it is going to evolve a lot in the future and in fact like if you look at the pro version of this that has a lot more feature very really advanced feature so that can save uh, i mean till next level so yeah so basically uh, whatever you will be seeing what is the solution i will be showing you guys that is like going to solve your day to day problem and immediately you can start like this to use those tools and everybody and that's where like all these tools are so uh, so famous and so known and every, everyone is using just because like immediately everybody is able to use and in fact like uh, 
for all these tools, the people has taken pro version from their own pocket and they are not even going to ask their company that uh, so take this one. Because they help everyone in their own work. Yes, please. Uh, sorry? Uh, so, it will capture password as star star star. So, that will be the, uh, like automatically encrypted and it will be not shown. So, yeah, it, that will not come. Okay. Do try this. Give it a shot. It will be very, very helpful and this is again a community product. So if you found any issue, enhancement you can, uh, you want to suggest or you need it for particular for your application, then you can uh, like let us know. So here you can raise the issue and everything you can see there. And another great thing, you see that you just have to click on this, download test case. Okay, so you see that what all things you got without doing anything. Like let me just show it from the beginning because I haven't shown you guys how I did it and how I started. So what you have to do, whenever you are going to start your testing, that's if you are going to start testing of this page, you just have, before starting your functional testing, you just have to click on this logo of test case studio, that's all. And now you start doing your testing. So it will say in our local only if something fails or when the test case ends, the full screenshot will also, recording will also save. Not the recording, the full. A screenshots? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. Meaning whether it fails or it doesn't fail, it will save in our local. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, 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 no. It will not save. You have, if you want to save, because if it if, if it will keep saving everything on your local system, that all the screenshots, yeah. then your system after two, three days, it will be like, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, no, that will not. But it will be there in the... In, the, in this window, it will be there till the time you want. Once you close this, everything will be erased. Like you don't want to save because if you want to save then only it will save. Otherwise like too many screenshots will be there. So if you don't want them then you can just close it. So you see that uh, everything has been recorded here. You see that your answer here, uh, the password is encrypted. You see that and even in the screenshot also it will be like a star star star. So that will not be visible and all the steps are here. So you see that now you see what all things we got without doing anything. We didn't do anything extra. Just click on that extension logo. If I click on this download test case, I got the test case in XLS, I got the screenshots, we got the script as well. You see that XPath and CSS selectors, we got it. Suppose I am writing the automation script as well. So as a manual tester, uh, we don't call it manual testing or something etc. But we call it to make others understand. And that's the thing. So you see that here we got the uh, manual test case, we got the uh, data, this is the data, we got XPath CSS selector. And if you want the automation script, we generally, not automation script, I would say, as an automation tester, if I am writing the script, that way it will be so, so useful. You just turn on this button and you see that driver.find element, by log, whatever x path and CSS script, I will just click on this command, go to my editor and paste this script. And then whatever actions we want to perform on them, that we can add it here. So this doesn't give you that kind of a script which you can execute it again, but it gives you the script which will help you a lot to write your automation script. Because 99% people prefer to write their own script. Nobody, like in reality, yes there are like really good tool and everything is there that which can generate the automation script, but most of the time and most of us used to prefer are writing our own script, so how it can save your time there. So uh, most of these solutions and tools which I am showing will be going to help each and everyone, those who are doing the testing, those who are writing the automation script in ground here. So basically you got manual test case, you got data, you got a screenshot, you got the script and XPath and selector. So if you are an automation engineer, then also you can use this and you will not have to go back to your browser to get the XPath and selectors for each and every step on which you have performed the action. So guys, this was the test case studio. Okay. Let's talk next set, set of problems. Okay. Now uh, the thing which you guys might be expecting and you, why you guys were thinking that okay, this person is here, so he will be talking about X path and selectors. How do you uh, verify your script or all the X path? Let's say your uh, UI got changed in your application. So generally, whenever UI change. Most of the time it happened that all the XPath and selectors used to break. So, uh, how do you verify in that case XPath and selectors? 
वन बाय वन yes so exactly like we do this way that uh, we used to execute our script whenever wherever a script used to fail we copy the x path for that step and then we verify that fix it again execute see the next step where it fails and then we verify copy that x path of selectors again verify uh, that tools or wherever you verify verify that and again fix it i'm sure most of us do that way. and suppose there are like hundreds or thousands of x path and generally like whenever we are working not preparing for interview or not learning in the training so if you are working in reality in, um, in your enterprise application or in your company that's where we used to have at least 100 or 200 uh, locators in one test case in their area okay? so if you have to verify that many is gone and that that is one of the like big region our uh, automation script used to go in backlog that we never go back and verify them and we just like okay automation ho gaya and then we used to keep doing the manual testing and pushing our releases fixes to cloud and that's where like uh, how many of you run the automation script that daily are you maintaining because maintaining is the one of the biggest challenge writing to like anybody can write automation so any one of you have this experience where your automation script has gone in backlog and that is there nobody is able to maintain always always like almost everyone okay we'll show you the solution for this how much time do you waste to write not one locator one locator page where you have to write like 40 50 locators or uh, selectors or 100 selectors locators minimum what do you guys think like 30 minutes 40 minutes 1 hour 2 hour on an average i will not take anything or i will not give anything if you will guys will answer one average 1 hour 2 hour it will take easily right how do you handle the complex scenarios like shadow law my frame svg etc how many of you even heard about these terms shadow law how complicated it is like to handle to handle them and the very first question it becomes like really difficult to identify whether this is there is a shadow law and then handling the element inside them writing the script and then what if like element is inside shadow law and that shadow law is inside i frame or if it is inside 10 shadow law how do you handle that scenario trust me if you take whole day for i can challenge anyone Yes, and all this will be possible just in like few seconds. I will show you the solution. Okay, how do you learn about DOM X path index? Suppose uh, because generally I am sure that you guys will agree that most of us testing and people in testing they come mostly from the non-IT background, or like even if you are in IT background, you start testing, then you start learning about the automation <coughs> testing and DOM etc. but how you will become expert like who can teach you because generally whenever we take the training or whenever we give the training we generally focus on like java selenium and then uh, we hardly teach about uh, writing about x path we just uh, teach few of the syntaxes but until unless you will not have the dom knowledge until unless you will not have the uh, you are not handling the errors of x path of selectors you will not become an expert very really expert in automation web automation i'm talking about not in yet so if you doesn't have the dom knowledge if you doesn't have the x path syntax and errors knowledge then it becomes really difficult to write the really good script so how you get the knowledge of these things because not every time one expert will be beside you that i'm i am writing this x path why it is showing me zero matching code is it syntax is wrong why it is not finding is uh, like because most of the question which comes in automation testing ui automation testing it is not clicking on element why i am getting this uh, element not found here thank you then inspecting invisible problem with uh, elements this is a, again a big pain point whenever you get those kind of like bubble loader or problems which you cannot uh, inspect which immediately disappear basically some of you might be knowing that we can press f12 or something like that we can run the debugger but that also 
not work in many situations because what happens that immediately disappear uh, those kind of drop-down as soon as you press any key. So uh, let's talk about the solution of all these problems. Here is the selectors hub. This will help you guys to solve all these problems <coughs> what we have talked. And I didn't want you to talk like the very basic things that it generate the XPath and selectors. That how many of you are already using selectors? Okay. So uh, so this used to generate the XPath and selectors. Now let me show you. This is again a browser plugin. So here you write this. I'm not going to show that uh, how to install and all. So here you see. Okay. Okay. One more thing. Let me ask before this we start. I guess we have enough time. How many of you? Don't use an XPath. How many of you don't use an XPath tool? I hope answer the question is very simple. Is there anyone who don't use XPath tool to write and verify XPath? So all of you use XPath tool? Okay, surprising. Okay. So uh, I'm not sure if I'm uh, talking to the right audience. Uh, uh, are you all tester, automation testers? Okay. So uh, do you guys use XPath tool? Yes or no? At least you can say. Yeah, tools. You yes, dev tools. Anybody who think that they don't use an XPath tool? Because whenever we talk in like uh, I post or anybody post on LinkedIn, so people just say that don't use an XPath tool or I don't use an XPath tool. I'm surprised that here nobody is saying that we don't use an ex we don't use expert. Okay. People say that they are not. Their knowledge is decreased if they use an expert. But when I especially to use that, they are like the one thing they are always against is that uh, how will I learn if I use expert? Expert, right? Yes, exactly. That's what, and I'm sure like most of us will agree on this. So whenever people say that we don't use an expert, this is a myth actually, myth and mystery in expert world. Selectors world. We don't use an XPath tool. So actually, like there is no one who doesn't use an XPath tool. Everybody uses an XPath tool. This dev tools, you write your XPath and CSS selector here. <coughs> now this is different. Okay. So here people used to write the XPath and selectors, right? How many of you have written it here? If you guys have ever written XPath and selectors, so you must have written XPath and selectors here, right? Verify. Do you know, uh, so do you believe that this gives the right count of XPath and selectors? Yes, it uh, means that is the like standard thing because we say that we should we should not use XPath and selectors tool. We should write our own XPath because if you use, we will lose our uh, like skills. But when you have, when you are writing XPath and selectors here, we also consider that that gives the right count. I have written double forward slash a here; it's not visible. It is showing me 190, oh sorry, 91 counts here. One of 91. How many of you think that this is right count? Are there 91 links on this page? A string, absolutely. Yes. So it is matching the string as well. You see that. Here it is matching this string and that is the region it is highlighting this one. This is not an X path match here. This is the string match. So, but we have considered this as a standard X path of selectors tool. We never discuss, I'm sure like nobody has talking, generally never talk about this thing that whatever results you are getting here, it is not always correct. In many situations, this was a very simple X path which I have written it here, double false as A. In many situations, you write even a longer X path. Like, let me show you this one. Here, some of the X paths are written. Just copy this. Now it is showing one of one. You see that? So, is it an X path match or something else? X path match. 
a string match. It is a string match. This is not an X path match. So this is like in many times, in, even in interview, people ask such kind of question that if it is showing one of mark one, is that that means there is an element for this X path, and people say yes, this is an, there is an element for this. But actually, this is not a X path match. This is this is string match. You see that because there could be in the page some string with similar kind of syntax what you have written for selectors in X path. So this is not an X path match here. Now let's see that in selectors of we'll paste this same X path here in selectors of this is selectors of X. It used to show like this. And here you see that this is a X invalid X path syntax, and it is telling you that X path doesn't support tilted code, use vertical code. So this is a wrong syntax of X path. And this generally you will never able to learn, and you will keep looking for like you will keep looking here what is wrong here in this X path, why this is not invalid X path, until unless you don't have something like this which can tell you what is wrong. So this is basically like a smart editor which will help you to become expert in X path and selectors. So if you will be doing anything wrong, you will get to know that okay, what is wrong in my X path and selectors. Like even if you are writing uh, write selectors or X path like this, this is, and it happened many a situation that we uh, miss something. Like we are writing some X path here, and let's say we have missed something. In long X path, if you miss the single code somewhere, it will become very hard to identify with the bare eyes what is wrong in the X path. Like here, we have deleted something or we missed something. If we paste this thing here, will there be anyone who would be able to identify what is wrong in this X path? And generally, like when you write in X path in your company, they used to become like very long, long X path. Because I, when I will be giving demo or somebody will be teaching, they will be teaching login form. So that becomes like very easy. But when you work in real time in industry, that's where you have to write long X path. And if something got missing, you will be scratching your head and you will never be able to, I mean, easily you will not be able to identify what is wrong in this X path. Any guess, any, anyone can guess what is wrong in this X path? Yes, so this becomes like real, real kind of problem that we are not able to identify. And if you well paste that X path here, you will get to know that close square bracket is missing. So easily you can fix such kind of X path. And when you are writing your X path, let's say you are writing here. Let's say we write this X path here. Okay. We want to learn, we want to become expert, expert in X path and selectors. How do you guys become expert in any particular technology? Yes. By reading book or uh, by reading tutorial, by taking training? Practice. 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 And by, okay, yeah, that is also good. Practice. By practice, we become expert. But if you do the practice of writing the code, let's say you are doing a lot of practice on Java or Selenium or any particular technology and you are doing the practice on Notepad, <coughs> writing the code on Notepad or paper and pen and you are doing hell lot of practice, will you become expert? Mistakes. No. Then how do you become the expert? Mistakes. Sorry? Mistakes. Mistakes. You make a lot of mistakes on Notepad as well. Practice on the tools. Practice on the tools. Practice on the smart editors. Right, when you write the code in IntelliJ or I mean whatever uh, smart editor you are using, when you will write the code here, and if you, you make the mistakes that, and when it highlighted like this way, like there is an error here, expected semicolon, that's where you learn, that's where you become the expert in any technology. You learn about all the uh, methods or all the API methods of any API, when you use the smart editor. If you write Selenium code, a lot of code, or do a lot of practice on pen and paper or on notepad, you will never become expert in Selenium or Java or any particular technology. You will become expert only when you write the code in smart editors. Agree? Because when you, how many methods do you know about inside WebDriver API? Nobody can teach you in any training, no book will have all the methods because book will become tomorrow old. Suppose Selenium 5 is coming, Selenium 4 came. Whatever books were written in Selenium 3 or whatever is there is stuff that gone in waste. They will not, I mean that not gone in waste, but that will not get updated. 
that will now not have those uh, updated API methods, new API methods. But when you write here in Smart Editor, and when you upgrade the latest API, that's where as soon as you put the dot, you get all the methods. These are the methods under. These are the things available in the driver. So that's these Smart Editors makes us an expert. So similarly here, this is a Smart Editor which will help you guys to become an expert. Suppose we have to write X bar for resources. Okay, and this is the element. That's it. Or I will take a very simple example. We'll move out from this page. I'm on Google. And suppose this Gmail is here. Okay? <coughs> and if we ask to write the X path for this element, how many types of X paths you can write for this element? Maybe like four, five patterns you can write, ten patterns you can write. But and there is a text here. How many methods of text do you know? Like by using this text, if we have to write X path, how many methods do you know? Text, you know that text function is there in X path. Okay. <coughs> Contains text is there. Any more method do you know? Any more? I think JavaScript executor can also. Uh, that that is not for X path. So so basically, like when we write X path, we have whenever we think from our mind, it becomes difficult to recall all the methods which are available in X path, and we end up just writing always those X path with those methods what we have learned in past. We never get upgraded easily. So this is where if you write X path here, you will see that what all methods are possible here. You see that in the drop down here. As soon as you start writing here, so you get to know that okay, there is a dot method as well. For text, there is this method. This method contains dot is also there. Then, as you go, you see that contains normalized space is also there. Contains text is there, and then you keep on scrolling. So this is where it will help you guys a lot to learn all types of method, different types of methods available in X path. And if you are writing CSS vector, then also it will help you to write the CSS vector and to learn the different methods which are available. In CSS vectors as well. So this makes you become expert in X path and vectors, and then you will be like, as soon as you inspecting any element here, it will let you know that what is wrong, what is right, what is possible, what is not possible. You see that this kind of error message you will read it here. Not an error message, sorry. This is an alert. Like if you try to automate this element, it is non-interactive element like this one. Because sometimes this silly question being asked in interview or in any situation, you also will be having this kind of uh, situation where you might think that, okay, I'm trying to automate this element, but it is not. The Selenium is giving me this kind of error that in element is not interactable. So these kind of alert <coughs> selectors will tell you offhand that this is not possible. This is possible. If any element is inside shadow long or inside iframe, you just have to inspect that element. Selectors will tell you everything. That this element is inside schedule down, which can't be accessed through X path, use CSS selector. So this will also help you to learn these things. And then it used to give the CSS selector and everything here. And you can verify as well and you can write the new X path. New CSS selector. If you copy this CSS selector here in Dev Tools, you see that it is showing 0 of 0. Because here Dev Tools through control app, it doesn't support the shadow down. You cannot verify CSS selector or selector for the shadow long elements. And in fact, it used to generate the wrong X path as well. It shouldn't generate the X path for the shadow long elements because that doesn't support. If you inspect any element which is inside multiple shadow long, it will tell you that it, uh, there are two shadow long, and that also it helps. And it, it generates the complete script as well. And trust me, if you try to uh, automate this page and try to enter the Value inside this enter pizza name, I can back here and you will at least take one to two hours just to enter the value in this field. And if you copy this, hardly a few seconds. Done. Copy and paste it in your editor and you will you will be able to automate this element like this. Just to identify the shadow how many shadow are there, that itself takes a lot of time. Because you have to scroll all the way up and down in the 
then if any element is inside uh, I frame, it used to tell you that it is inside I frame, then what is the X path of I frame and X path of that element. So that also you need not to waste time. If an element is inside nested I frame, that also it tells you that there are two I frames, uh, X path for frame 1, frame 2 and X path for that element. I hope I'm not making you both ways. Here, uh, if an element is inside iframe and shadow DOM or multiple shadow DOM, everything it will tell you, you just have to inspect the element and it gives you the information that this is, element is inside shadow DOM and that shadow DOM is inside iframe. Okay. So this way, it basically it helps all, uh, it helps you to become expert in XPath and selectors and in DOM knowledge. It helps you to identify any kind of web element. Now, and uh, any sorts of things, it helps. Now we talk about the, those things, let's say we, our UI got changed and we have to verify. Now we have these many, such a long script we have and so many selectors are there and we don't want to execute our script again and again to verify this X path is working, this X path is working, this is working, this is not working or what. So we don't want to, like because when you will execute your script, if this X path is not working, it will break here, then it will go to the next. Uh, then you fix that, and then you will again execute, then it will break somewhere here, then again you will execute, then it will break somewhere here. So it will take a whole lot of days just to fix one test case, one page, one locator space. So can we verify all these selectors without wasting any time? Yes, let's see how. And you need not to copy X path like this, one X path from here, then you go here, then you open selectors up, then you paste it here. No. You need not to do that thing. You select complete script without removing import and whatever. Whatever shape is there, just copy everything. Copy this. Come here. There is a you see, click to verify multiple X path there. Click on this button, then edit button is there, click on this. Here, here you paste this complete script. <coughs> We pasted this complete script and what is our command? Our command is driver.findElementPy.xpath. You copy this and this is just one time effort the setting the command. Next time onwards is very easy, straightforward. You click on that edit button, paste complete script. And here what you have to do in the command, you replace that with xpath value keyword. And boom. You see all the xpath has been filtered. This is showing same X part twice because this was twice in the script. So don't worry that it has made duplicate. No, it was twice here, so it has fresh twice. So basically here it is it has fetched all the X path from our script, what we have pasted there, and showing you the result that these are the X path, it is one matching node, zero matching node. Whichever is showing zero zero, you can just copy and fix that whenever there is a UI or any change in your application. So this way you would be able to verify all the X path of your script in one go. You will not have to waste time and if any script which is there in backlog, you can just verify it again like this. And uh, one question here. Uh, will it show the, let's suppose if any of the object is not added, let's say the X path is not added for that particular object, okay and next time they have added a new object, Will that show the new object also added or something is missing like that? Uh, no, no, that will not show. You will have to just inspect that object. Okay. Oh, because it, every time, it is not just one object added. You see that in every web page there are millions of elements. In the UI it will show just one, that lunch time, that, you see that, that lunch time, just to show this, uh, do you love tea or this lunch time, there are so many elements has been added in the DOM, DOM. so many tags has been added. So for every object, for every element, there could be an X path. So to show here in the uh, tool automatically that this new element has been added, if that it will start showing. Because for, for us, for the tool, it is very easy. In one thing, it will show all X path for all the elements. But it will become very difficult for the user to figure it out which one he wants. Because all these are kind of like X path itself here. Just that we will uh, format them. So it's a kind of like whatever element you are seeing here, it's uh, like everything has an X path. So it doesn't show that automatically. This command, like many of you must not be using this command. So this can be edited, uh, whatever command will be there, so that can be edited. So 
for that, like I will request that you can watch this part closure because I have shown the very simple thing. Uh, you can declare using locator space. So command could be anything. You just have to replace x path with x path value keyword, and that can be done. So uh, this was one of the like major problem which we were talking here. That how do you verify all the x paths whenever you are changing? So which I have shown you guys. The next one is how much time do you waste to write one locator page? So suppose we have to write locators for this page. Okay. So how do we done, generally do? Like we inspect. Let's say we have to uh, we want to write for products. So we copy this. We inspect and we copy and we paste it in our script. And we don't paste just that. We have to write this driver dot find element y dot x path or whatever that method you use with x path because just x path you don't paste in your script. Thank okay? you. And then every time you have to like type this command whenever you inspect any element, copy, and then again you will type this. So this, are you guys doing this thing? This takes a lot of time, and this is a very tedious task. Even in like in 2020, when we like 2022, sorry, not just 2020. I mean like COVID time. So the last time you were talk like that kind of thing. So, so. Uh, when we have such great innovation like COVID, even in that era, if we start typing like again and again this kind of command, we are wasting a lot of time. We shouldn't waste our time where we are smart people, automation engineers and testers and such great engineers we are. So why should we waste time here? So what if I say like we can get this complete command, not just X path? Will it save some time? So what you have to do? Click on this button here. I don't know where this projector is going here and there. Okay. Okay. So you see that there is a button here on the right side. This one. <laughs> you click on this, then this command will turn on here, and you see here your command is generated. So now you see copy this command and paste it in your editor, and boom. You see that we got this command. Now you inspect any element here, copy this. You need not to type that complete command. So this way you will not just copy the X path, you will copy the command. And you will be having this question as well, is this X path, whatever X path it will be generating, will that be reliable? I can I, I can give open challenge, it will give you the better X path what you will write. And anybody can come and uh, like if you think that uh, I want to write XPath for any particular element in the web and I can prove that this will give you the better XPath what a human can write. So you can test on that whatever XPath is generated. Okay, so this way you see that you get the complete command. You must be thinking that what if we are using uh, Selenium with Python. So yes, there is a command option for Selenium with Python. You just select that and then it will generate for that. If you are using Cypress, it will generate for that. You just select that from the drop down if you are using playwright, it will give for that playwright as well. So it will be like very easy now. You just copy and paste. If you are using locator page like at find by, because most of you must be using this command. How many of you use this at find by x path and then x path and then <coughs> keyword? Right. So this gives you that kind of x path, that's that kind of command as well. And you see that it is smart enough to get the keyword name as well that force this. This x path is for post this. So you see. Now, but still, if we have to generate x path for all these elements, all these headers, all these input boxes here, <coughs> so we will have to inspect one by one, right? And that will take a lot of time. Like if I need for all of them, I will inspect this product, copy this, <coughs> go back to editor, paste this, come back, inspect. Copy this, go back, paste it here. This takes a lot of time. So, like, if suppose we have to do it for 100 elements, 100 times, we will have to inspect back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Too much time waste. So, can we do it like all in one shot? So, yes, that's also possible. There is a third button. This one, you click on this, and here you see that now we start inspecting all the elements for which we want to generate the X bar, and it will generate the complete locator. 
Let's say we want for products, we inspected this. We want for pro plants, we want for courses, we want for practice page, we want for resources, we want for ball, or anything like here, and email, and password. Let's say we have generated for so many elements. You just simply click on this copy button, go back to your script, and move. See, this way your locator page is ready within few seconds. So that's how you can generate the locator page for any particular framework, whatever you want. And these commands all are editable. Like if you, uh, let's say you don't use this at find by, you are using driver dot find elements, choose that, copy, and in your editor you can paste it. So this way you can generate the locator page within few seconds. How do you handle complex scenarios like Shadow DOM? So I just showed you guys that uh, Shadow DOM and all, it used to support very smartly. You just have to inspect the element, nothing extra, nothing extra you have to do. You just inspect the element, it will tell you that this element is SVG element or Shadow DOM, inside Shadow DOM or type everything it tells you. Then uh, you are learning, so it used to tell you all, all the errors and X paths, lectures. <coughs> Then inspecting dynamic invisible drop-down elements, that also it helps a lot because uh, there are many kinds of elements which immediately disappear. Like here on uh, Flipkart website, if we, you see that these drop-downs appear. As soon as you right-click, they immediately disappear. <coughs> right, that gone. And now how do we inspect those kind of elements? If you go on Twitter, you will see that there is a bubble loader. If we try to inspect them, that element, as soon as we try to inspect them, immediately disappear. So how to inspect such kind of elements? Anyone? Yes, press F8 and then do that. But in many situations, like F, uh, this uh, F8, that might not work in this kind of situation where element immediately disappears as soon as you press any key. So, it happened a lot. So, in this kind of situation, how we can uh, like inspect such kind of elements? Yes, developers can do it uh, sometimes, but also in that situation also it becomes really difficult. So, here in selectors, uh, we have this feature of debugger. What you have to do? You take on this debugger button and make that element visible within 5 seconds. And it will hold that element, like let's say, we just click on this debugger button and now make this element visible here and you will see after 5 seconds it will make this pause here and now you can inspect this element. Like any of these elements you can inspect it here. You see we are able to inspect this iPhone 13 and the XPath inspector is generated for that particular element to inspect. So this way you would be able to inspect such kind of dynamic elements as well. Using the uh, debugger feature of Slackr And then there are like not many features. Uh, you must be thinking that how can we generate the... Uh, because most of us used to prefer to write the XPath relative to other elements. So, that is also possible in selectors how to generate the XPath relative to other elements, access based XPath basically. So there is a button here, access button this. So for an example, suppose we want to write an XPath or enter email with respect to this user email. So you click on this button here and now inspect first user email and then inspect the enter email field. And you see that it has generated the XPath for enter email field this one with respect to user email. So this way you can generate XPath for an element with respect to other element if you want to generate. And there are tons of features I will keep on talking. So like there is a button here if you want to generate uh, XPath, case insensitive XPath in CSS selector that is also possible. Uh, too many features are there so I'm not going to talk about them. So this way you can make a use of it and it will help a lot to save a lot of time for you guys. And uh, yes of course like uh, 
you can go next level. There is a, uh, I will just quickly show you this pro version here. In this we have this even inspector, own inspector. So suppose you are generating the locator page or multiple XPath you want to generate or access based XPath. In one click you can generate, even you need not to click on this inspector like again and again. How, let's say how fast it is to generate the locator page in selectors of pro. So there is a code here and click on this home page and now select this inspector of selector support and you see this fast bit will be for you to generate selectors for all the uh, leg locator page just in one click. So or if you are generating this access based text path you just inspect first element and then second element. So very fast it is. So of course like not many places are there. Cool. So Selectors of can help you to solve many, many problems irrespective of whether you are using Selenium, Cypress, Playwright, or WebDriver, I or any automation framework or API that we need. Any question before I move on to the next set of problems? No question? Okay. How do you test if someone is good in UI automation? Like suppose uh, you are taking automation interview. How you will, uh, because hiring and taking interview is a like very tedious task. And we all face this challenge to identify if this person is good, if this, this person is good in automation or not. So how you guys uh, take the interview, how you guys make sure that okay, I don't want to waste any much time on this person by taking the interview, but I want to make sure that this person knows the UI automation, so we can get it on that form. So, give him a scenario and ask him to uh, like automate that. But in that case, like you will give a particular scenario, right? Not you, you will not be able to cover uh, hell lot of like uh, complex scenarios which are which generally we used to face whenever we are working on an automation testing in real time. So in, for that case I have uh, developed this uh, practice page which has all the complex scenarios out there in the UI automation. I can challenge if anybody can automate this page and enter the value in each and every field of this page then he is a real expert in UI automation. So if you want to test your expertise, yes of course, and I, I will not, I will also not be able to do this. Because it has been covered and it has, like every input box has some, some or other properties, some or other features. So even if like someone copied, so you must be thinking, you will say that, what if like if I give this page to automate to someone, and if we copy the code from somewhere, or if we just try to learn this page to automate. But, if someone is able to copy the code and if someone is able to, someone is doing that thing, they're copying the code or learning from somewhere, but definitely you will be asking the cross question. And if he is able to answer the cross question, that okay, this element has been automated by this way, by handling the shadow DOM and how he has done, then of course he, he knows that and that's what you want. So this page can help you a lot to solve this kind of your hiring problem, interview problems. So you can check out this, most of the trainer these days are using this page to uh, teach and of course like interviewer also using this page to take the interview. Many automation tools companies are using this page to give their demo to the client that their tool can automate each and every scenario like whether that is because Saturday is one of the most complex scenarios uh, which is considered in automation testing, UI automation. So these are the scenarios which have been covered in this page, you can check it out and this will help you guys a lot. With that, thank you so much.